driving 110 miles from an entire different state. I'm getting ready for the kickoff party this afternoon. Extremely excited. Can't wait to see what I'm going to do there. And I can't wait to meet new people. And I'm going to be sh doing another clip each day showing what I'm doing. We're right now at a, at a restaurant at the kickoff party of, Lin of Lindsay Film Festival. This is extremely exciting. And after this, we're going to do go to the screening. So a lot of excitement through the building. Extremely noisy. All I have with me is my sugar-free Coca-Cola. Bye. from New York. I'm so excited to be here in lovely Florence, Alabama. So this is cla first class for young filmmaking and we got a gigantic green screen. Thank you. It's really big. Very this exciting. is basically by behind the scenes. Great. Just get to use them any way you want. So why are we using little small cameras instead of nice junky cameras? Well, you know what? I bet you can figure out the answer to that. You tell me. Why would it make more sense to use little, inexpensive, uh, doesn't cost an arm and a leg if they happen to get broken cameras? Yeah. Because what happens if they get broken? Uh, not like a $3,000 from a camera like that over there. We go to waste. You got it, buddy. Hello. So it's freezing cold. It's snowing outside. We're going to explore a bit. So let's see what we can find. First, I got this nice hat. It says Muscle Shores, which is a great, which is a small town in Alabama that's famous for its music. Let's see what we can find it while we. Well, you look at that. It's on the bridge. Let's see what we can see from the bridge. Hey guys, this is Jerry. This is Jerry Orris. So I'm in Alabama in Helen Keller's birthplace. If you don't know who Helen Keller is, she is a she is a girl who got sick and became blind and deaf. So this is very sad, but she learned how to deal with it and later even became an advocate and taught other people how to deal with being blind or deaf. So let's go take a look inside. Foundation for the Blind and traveled all over the world and made, um, you know, it helped other countries and everything and made sure that there was schools open up for the deaf and blind. Uh, more books were printed in Braille, you know, and, and things like that. So she, plus she, you know, uh, was just a goodwill ambassador all over the world. So. But let's start out here. Okay. Welcome to Ivy Green, birthplace of Helen Keller. Thank this you. house was built in 1820 by Helen's grandfather, David Keller. Built on a 640-acre plantation, it now stands on 10 acres of land. 85% of the furniture in the house is original. These are the original hard pine floors. The house stayed in the Keller family up until 1952 when it was purchased by the city of Tuscumbia and then in 1954 it was declared a National Historic Site. And Helen was here that day and made a speech. In fact, that's the last time she was here on the property. This is her father, Captain Arthur Keller. He was a farmer, a lawyer, a publisher of a local newspaper and captain in the Confederate Army. This is her mother, Kate Adams Keller. She was from Memphis, Tennessee and a direct descendant of John Quincy Adams, our sixth president. Now, Helen was actually born next door in the cottage. She was born June 27, 1880, a perfectly normal child, and then at the age of 19 months developed oh. a high fever. And of course, they had no medicines back then to give to her, so they had to just let it run its course. And after the fever broke is when they discovered she was deaf and blind. They ended up taking her to see Alexander Graham Bell in Washington. Do you know what Alexander Graham Bell invented? No. The telephone. Uh, and Bell? Yeah, and he also worked with his um, wife and his mother were hearing impaired. So he was working trying to get something to help them to hear, and that's how he developed the telephone. So. I see. But it was through Dr. Bell that they got in touch with the Perkins Institute, which was a school for the blind in the Boston area, and that's where they got Annie Sullivan, the teacher. 
Annie was only 20 years old when she came to teach her. Uh, she had been attending the Parkinson Institute herself because she had sight problems and her education had ended. And she was just kind of waiting and wondering what she was going to do to support herself because she was an orphan and had no one to depend on. So I'm sure when she got her letter from Captain Keller asking her to come to Tuscumbia, she was excited because he was going to pay her $25 a month. And I knew that was a lot back then. That was. That was quite, plus room and board. So, you know, that was quite a bit of money. But, of course, when she got here and met Helen, she was just really shocked because Helen was just like a little wild animal. This is Helen at age eight after Annie came in, cleaned her up, taught her some manners. This is Helen and her younger sister, Mildred. They were six years younger than her. We still have descendants of Mildred that live in the area today. Wow. So, if you'd like to look in the master bedroom, I'll point out a few things in there for you. That quilt is a crazy quilt. It was made by her Aunt Eveline, the old maid aunt that lived with them. It's almost 200 years old. The clothes in the wardrobe actually belong to Helen. And the gentleman's picture on the dresser is her younger brother, Philip Brooks Keller. He was 10 years younger than her and moved to Texas and raised his family. So I have a question. Okay. Did she ever get married? No, she didn't. She never got married. <laughs> now, Annie Sullivan, the teacher, got married, but she remained living with Helen, but Helen never married. So. If y'all would like to go upstairs, the room on the right is where the brothers slept. The room on the left is where Helen and Annie slept. And that, the bedroom up there, is where Helen locked Annie in. That first day she was here, she got mad at her, ran out of the room, slammed the door and locked it, put the key in her mouth and wouldn't tell anybody where it was, and as the day wore on, Captain Keller had to get a ladder and get her out through that window there. Could you wow. imagine locking your teacher in a room? That's a long detention period. Yep. <laughs> so we're upstairs in Helen Keller's house. This is where they slept. In one of the rooms, Helen Keller locked her teacher, Annie, in on the first day. Someone's going to get in trouble. What's that over there? Well, we can see from right here. See what's over this. Tiny, small, much smaller bed, and quite large on the other bed. And when Annie was locked in the bedroom, her, Helen's father had to save basically Annie by getting a ladder. This is very narrow right here. Take a look outside. Uh, this is a replica of the statue that was unveiled in Washington in October of 2009 and placed in the visitor center of the Capitol. Each state has two people to represent them, and Helen is one of the representatives for the state of Alabama. This was in our state capital up until a few months ago and they moved it here. So. But I, I just love this statue. I think it's just so pretty. So. Oh, our visitors are, are, are visitors allowed to go see the water fountain where this is from? And you can go and you can open the gate and go in if you'd like. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stuff is amazing. So now we're outside and this is where she learned her first word and hand language, water. This is very special and there's even an entire statue of it inside the building. Let's see what this says. At this well, Annie Selvian Macy revealed the mystery of language to seven-year-old Helen Keller by spelling the word W-A-T-E-R, water, into her hands as water flowed over this other hand. That's amazing. Let's take another look at it. Okay, so let's see what else we can find. So you we have a, a few other separate versions.
just like Harry Potter. That swing, a swing basket over there belong, sewing basket over there belongs to Helen Keller. Now it does not say what this house is for, so I'm a bit clueless there. So this is where the food was made, or the kitchen. Very old kitchen too. You can see old tools they used instead of now we have these stoves and microwaves. Let's continue looking. There's a beautiful pot over there dressed with flowers. Red and pink shirts. Not part of the building itself. I'm pretty sure this right here is the rest of the building. It looks like there's many other memorials here. Well, we finished this. I guess I guess we're going to head back. See you next time, guys.